Hello, everybody. <laughs> Happy Sunday. And I hope that you all have, that you've all had and are having a beautiful weekend. And uh, welcome to Aquarius Rising Africa. And happy to have Caleb again with us this evening or this morning for you, whatever. Hello, Caleb. How are you doing? I'm here. Well, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> nice to you. How are your wolves doing? Sleeping. Okay. Well, nice to see everyone in the chat again. Uh, hello, Lisa D. It's always good to see you. Um, Kim, nice to see you too. Yeah, Greg, Margaret, lovely to see you guys. And for those of you who joined for uh, on Solutions this morning with Yana, my friend, I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you for being there as well. Cool. So we are going to continue today with an arbiter of magic of the ancients. Um, we've uh, done, I, this, I think tonight is part three, right, Caleb? Yeah. And um, I, think so. I think we probably, yeah, we, I think we probably have, um, we'll be able to do today. And one more show after this is quite a bit to do. Kind of hoping that I would um, finish it off this evening. Um, but it doesn't look like we're going to do it this evening. Cool. So you ready, Caleb, to continue with um, the Arbitale of Magic? We are now on, I think, the second septenary. septenary. Am I saying it right? Septenary, right? Yeah. You are. Um, and I think we'll try and do, finish two and do three and four as well. Let's see how it goes. Cool. You have to read the Latin because it's always translated anyway. Um, I don't think there is much Latin yet anywhere. Um, at the moment, anyway. So the the Latin I won't be reading anymore because I just found ridiculous anyway. Cool. Well, here on aphorism number eighteen. So what we're going to do again? I'm just going to read it, and then you can um, uh, just decode it, if you will, for us. So, guys, again, um, we are not spell casting. For those of you who think that we are, not at all. As you guys know, Caleb's been in the arcane. He was in the arcane for quite a while. Um, he's very au fait with how um, our brethren in the dark work with these um, things. So he's really just educating us to be aware of what is going on. Yeah. So aphorism 18. There are other names of the Olympic spirits delivered by others. They, uh, but they only are effectual, which are delivered to anyone by the spirit, the revealer, visible or invisible. And they are delivered to everyone as they are predestined. Therefore, they are called constellations. Uh, and they seldom have any efficacy above 40 years. Therefore, it is most safe for the young practices of art that they work by the offices of the spirits alone without their names. And if they are preordained to attain the art of magic, the other parts of the art will offer themselves unto them of their own accord. Pray therefore for a constant faith and God will bring to pass all things in due season. What do you say about that? Well, we were talking about constellations and powers. So we learned about that with the angel series. I don't know what that's about. And the god they're talking about is the, you can take that with a small g. Right. And they're also saying you have to have an aptitude for magic. You can't just decide to do it one day.
Yeah, it says here, yeah, uh, and if they are preordained to attain the art of magic, the other right. parts of the art will offer themselves and to them of their own accord. So they've so got you to, have have to go through some testing first. Yeah. And then. Right. right. And then the other parts of the art will offer themselves unto them of their own accord. So then will they come to the individual, right? Is that what they're saying? Once the, once these spirits have recognized, let's say I'm doing this, I'm wanting to go and I have certain aptitudes and I've been tested. So the spirits will obviously observe that I as a human would have, say, certain abilities. They would then find me. I don't need to go out and find them. They will find me. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Pretty much. And how would they find the individual? Is it through dreams, through what? Prayer, meditation, what? How, what's the most obvious way they find the person? They just show up. Right. You do have visions. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Aphrism 19. Olympus and the inhabitants thereof do of their own accord offer themselves to men in the form of spirits and are ready to perform their offices for them, whether they will or not. By how much the rather will they attend you? Sorry, let me just say that again. Whether they will or not. By how much the rather will they attend you? This is different kind of English. If they are desired. But they do appear also evil spirits and destroyers, which is caused by the envy and malice of the devil. And because men do allure and draw them unto themselves with their sin as a punishment due to sinners. Whoever therefore desireth familiar, familiarly to have a conversation with spirits, let him keep himself from enormous sins and diligently pray to the Most High to be his keeper, and he shall break through all the snares and impediments of the devil, and let them apply himself to the service of God, and he will give him an increase in wisdom. Yeah, and God with a small g. It's a real subtle way to introduce you to polytheism. To what, sorry? Polytheism. What is that? Worshiping more than one God. All oh, right, okay. So what are they saying here then? But uh, uh, like when, you, when they're saying, but there do appear also evil spirits and destroyers, which is caused by the envy and malice of the devil. So is he saying that um, the, the more subtle spirits, the one that appear as if they are good, is and, uh, and there are those that appear, and there are also those that appear that are of, or angry or whatever it is, evil spirits. So is that kind of like a way... Um, a deception that you think that the more good spirits are actually good to work with and the evil ones are evil. So are you saying that none of them are really good? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, with the light side and the dark side, right? Right. Okay. We're all on the same team. Right. So the subtle they ones will come. They don't. They don't stop at trying to deceive you to get you convinced about anything so okay aphorism 20 all things are possible to them that believe them and are willing to receive them but to the incredulous and unwilling all things are impossible there is no greater hindrance than a wavering mind levity and constancy, 
drunkenness, lusts, and disobedience to the word of God. A magician, therefore, ought to be a man that is godly, honest, constant in his words and deeds, having a firm faith towards, toward God, prudent and, and covetous of nothing, but of wisdom about divine things. This goes to show you that they practice faith and faithfulness perfectly, or almost as perfect as you probably can compared to other faiths or other religions. Right. They believe in what they're doing. Right. It's like what you've, I think what you've often said in the past is that, uh, and I know Jesse's mentioned that herself, is that uh, when it comes to um, Satanists and stuff like that, I mean, they will fast. They will uh, do everything they need to do, and they have more faith than most religions do, right? Is that what oh, you're for saying? sure. Yeah. They 100% believe it. Right. They don't have to be told twice. All right. When you do call, okay, this is Aphorism 21. When you call any of the Olympic spirits, observe the rising of the sun that day and of what nature the spirit is which you desire and saying the prayer following. Your desire shall be perfected. Omnipotent and eternal God, who has ordained the whole creation for thy praise and glory and for the salvation of man, I beseech thee that thou would ascend thy spirit, NN, what's NN, of the solar order, who shall inform and teach me those things which I shall ask of him, or that he may bring me medicine against the dropsy. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thine, through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Lord, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, they're using the name of Jesus, though. So what right. do you say about that? Well, there's something to be said about that, but that's a, that's a totally different show. Okay. So what are they saying about observe the rising of the sun that day? What does that mean, to observe the rising of the sun? And what the nature uh, and of what nature the spirit is which you desire? So are they Talking saying the like... Sorry? Talking about seasons. Okay. And when they talk about of of, uh, of what nature the spirit is which you desire, is that now once you've decided who or what spirits you want to work with or those that want to work with you? Right. Exactly. So once you've figured, yeah, so once you've figured that out, that's the prayer you have. Right. But thou shalt not. Okay, but thou shalt not detain the spirit above a full hour unless he be familiarly addicted unto thee. What does that mean? So you can't be having engagement with the spirit for more than an hour unless he be familiarly addicted no, unto thee. To you. Right. For as much as thou camest in peace and quietly and hast answered unto my petitions, I give thanks unto God. In whole name thou comest, and now thou mayest depart in peace unto thy orders, and return to me again when I shall call thee by thy name, or by thy order, or by thy office, which is granted from the Creator. Amen. Right. Yeah, they're just upside down. We'll do it upside down. Ecclesians chapter 5, be not rash with thy mouth, neither let thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and though, and though in earth. Therefore let thy words be few, or a dream cometh through the multitude of business. What does that mean? 
Are they saying that you're going to get uh, answers or whatever revelations, if you will, in dreams as well? You can, yes. I think it was Solomon that wrote Ecclesiastes. Notice it's a Solomonic magic thing. Right. A lot of this comes from John D, by the way. Who is John D? He is a mage. Right. Okay, I'm just looking. Uh, Amy Jo, they have their own Jesus. So many frauds. Speak in the name of Jesus now. Okay, so it's all about the fruits. Yeah, it makes sense to me. They speak of <laughs> that name. Yeah. Right. And yeah, there's okay. a lot to be said about that, but not this show. Okay. The, th the third septenary. We call that a secret, which no man can attain unto by human industry without revelation, which science lieth obscured, hidden by God in the creature, which nevertheless he doth permit to be revealed by spirits to a due use of the thing itself. And these secrets are either concerning things divine, natural, or humane, but thou mayest examine a few and the most select, which thou wilt com uh, commend with many more. What does that all mean? Um, if you heard what, if you listen to what you were saying, Again, it's a lot of as above, so below kind of stuff. Kind of structure themselves like the church, kind of, I guess. Okay. Aphorism 23. Make a beginning of the nature of the secret, either by a spirit in the form of a person, or by virtue separate, either in humane organs, or by what manner soever, the same may be effected, and this being known, require of a spirit which knoweth that art, that he would briefly declare unto thee whatsoever that secret is, and pray unto God that he would inspire thee with the grace whereby thou mayest bring the secret to the end thou desireth, for the, pray for the praise and glory of God and the profit of thy neighbor. All right. Again, they're just <laughs> if you if you look at this the way you should, you can see a lot of the structure of the Catholic Church here. See a lot of it. Now it probably goes a lot deeper than that, but basically what I I've been trying to do with this whole series is to show people how attractive they make this look, especially if you're religious minded. Yeah. And that, you know, and that would briefly declare unto thee whatever the secret is. So they're basically saying, and what I noticed in this one, I'm going to just find it here. But or by what uh, manner soever the same may be affected, and and this being known, require of a spirit. So you require the spirit which knoweth that art. So there would be a spirit that knows what particular art you're looking for, what particular uh, direction, I guess, you're going into, that he would briefly declare unto thee whatsoever that secret is. So you're not getting the information from God. You're getting no. it from a spirit, right? Right. Or as the Catholics say nowadays, a saint. Yeah. That's exactly true. That's what's obvious to me. Yes, now. I'm picking on Catholics. <laughs> I don't think you're picking on Catholics. I just think it's unfortunately the Catholic Church is the Vatican is the most powerful and has definitely corrupted a lot of stuff. We know that. So yeah, it's true, Greg. I'm just I'm just looking at some of the comments here as well. 
it amazes me how Christian they sound, but are not. Yeah, that's the that that's just what you were saying, Caleb. They make it sound um, very holy. This is okay. basically an introduction to magic, so it's kind of priming you for what you're you're in for later. Right. Aphorism 24, the greatest secrets are number seven. The first is the curing of all diseases in, um, in the spaces of seven days, either by character or by natural things or by the superior spirits with divine assistance. What do you say about that? Again, it's adding ritual to it all. Second is to be able to prolong life to whatsoever age we please. I say a corporal and natural life. Is that why these guys live to be so old? These old royals and things. When they transmutate, yes. So that's transmutation. Yeah. Okay. Eternal life. You can't die at that point. The third is to have the obedience of the creatures in the elements which are in the forms of personal spirits, also of pygmies, sagani, nymphs, dryads, and spirits of the woods. Talking about wood sprites, water spirits, and the little people. Right. Elemental magic, basically. So the third is to have the obedience of the creatures. So basically, how do they get these creatures to be obedient to them? Because if he says the third is to have the obedience of the creatures, what do they do in the elements? You start following the spirit that controls them. Right. They're basically the caretakers of nature, gardeners and whatnot. Like I said before, they can be good or bad. Right. The fourth is to be able to dis discourse with knowledge and understanding of all things visible and invisible and to understand the power of everything and to what it belongeth. So they want you to look into the nature of things and what's behind it, basically. And who it belongs to. Right. Or what it belongs to. Wow. Exactly. So this is so this is so multi-layered, multi-dimensional. It's like that's what I think I was saying the the other the last time we were doing this. It's like before you know it, you've slipped. It's like you're slipping on a very slippery rock at the sea. And boom, the next thing you've fallen and you're slipping and sliding. And you're going through the different levels to these things because they make it look so seductive. Right. The they make it almost that, worthwhile. Yeah, exactly. The fifth is that a man be able to govern himself according to that end for which God hath appointed him. Say one more time. The fifth is that a man be able to govern himself according to that end for which God hath appointed him. God is a small G, but they want you to be aware of what you're getting into. Simple way to put that. You're making what an you informed decision. And what your powers are. Like where your strengths lie, I would imagine that would right. also be there. Right. So you must know yourself, basically. You know what you're capable of. Exactly. The sixth is to know God and Christ and his Holy Spirit. This is the perfection of the mic microcosmos. Again, it's the upside down. Yeah. Because they have to know how that works, doesn't it? Don't they? They have to know how right. the Holy Spirit. 
those those fallen angels came from heaven, so of course they're gonna structure everything the way they know. The seventh to be regenerate, the Henochius. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Henochius, as Henochius the king of the inferior world. These seven secrets a man of an honest and constant mind may learn of the spirits without any offense unto God. Again, this hidden knowledge. The mean secrets are likewise seven in number. Number one, the first is the transmutation of metals, which is vulgarly called alchemy, which certainly is given to very few and not but of special grace. Not everybody has the, the aptitude to do that kind of magic. Right. The second is the curing of diseases with metals, either by the magnetic virtues of precious stones or by the use of the philosopher's stone and the like. Soul magic. The third is to be able to perform astronomical and mathematical miracles, such as the hydro hydraulic engines. Hydraulic. Okay, sorry, it's a different, yeah, engines to administer business um, by the influence of heaven and things which are of the like sort. That would be Pythagorean magic, or as it's known today, science. <laughs> yeah. The fourth is to perform the works of natural magic of what sort soever they be. That's Druidism. No matter how you break it down, it's, you, you learn how to become a Druid. Oh, Druidism. Okay. Yep. The fifth is to know all physical secrets. Kind of leans into the uh, science part of it. These all tie together at some point, so. Yeah. The sixth is to know the foundation of all arts which are exercised with the hands and offices of the body. That's so how you get the, the circle around the eye, the pyramid fingers, the posing, people dancing, moving their arms around, that kind of stuff. That's, that's what they're talking about. They're performing rituals without you even knowing it. So the, the symbolism, basically, the hand symbolism, is that what you're saying? Yeah, hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, that would seem to me the sixth is to know the foundation of all arts, which are exercised with the hands and offices of the body. Yeah, that would make sense to me that it would be symbolism that these people use. Um, the positions, the triple sixes, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> okay, the seventh is, okay, Caleb's obviously singing to his dogs. Let me just see what's happening in the chat here in the meantime. Angel of Death's World, L Lanessa, what is that? I forgot the name. People were doing it during Rona. The Angel of Death's World. I don't think I've heard about that. Are you talking about a dance? Would that be a dance or is that a some type of a... There's a lot dance? of dances that are prohibited in a lot of religions. So like Mennonites and Amish or whatever. They prohibit dance because just because of that body magic. Right. 
The seventh There's is to know that. Sorry. There's some validity to that, so. Yeah. The seventh is to know the foundation of all arts which are exercised by the angelical nature of man. What does that mean? That means the improper worship of angels. People go into that as a religion. It's just a form of magic. Right. Okay, the lesser secrets are seven. The first is to do a thing diligently and to gather together much money. Speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're into. Work hard and make money. Right. Be a slave to the, the debt system. Yeah. That's interesting because, I mean, I'm just trying to think of how how many religions um, believe that money is evil, right? Or money is the root not, to evil. Not mainline Christianity, that's their God. Yeah. But yet there's so many religious people who battle with, with finances. Right. That's because they gave it all to the pastor. <laughs> okay. The second or is the, to ascend. The healer or the prophet, I guess. I watched the program the other day where this guy said he killed Anton LaVey by clipping his silver chain. And then he said, Benny Hinn's a great prophet. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Benny Hinn is not a great prophet. He makes a great prophet, though. P-R-O-F-I-T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so much of that that we need to just be aware of, right? Right. This the is second hoping, is, hoping, hoping, hoping open eyes here and open ears. Yeah. If you can get past all the frilly words and everything else, you'll see it for what it is. The second is uh, to ascend from a mean state of dignities and honors and to establish a newer family, which may be illustrious and do great things. I'm going to read that so you, again. They want you to okay. reach for the stars, basically. Literally, the stars, the angels, the fallen angels. Yeah, to ascend from a mean state of dignities and honors. And to establish a newer family. What is what do they mean a newer family? As in new N E W E R. They want you to quote be reborn, but not like Christians. They want you to transmutate to become like them. Right, right. I'm with you. Right, exactly. Wow. Which may be illustrious and do great things. So you then they then you start gaining powers, right? Isn't that like where you start now gaining? That's where you start to gain powers. powers. Not just gain powers, but practice with those powers. Right. See, now it becomes like you start seeing what they're talking about. And if you but I think if you're ignorant, you would still think that it's okay. Right. The third is to point, if you're not a believer by this point, you're hook, line, and sinker by now. Yeah. Mm hmm Absolutely. The third is to excel in military affairs and happily to achieve to great things and to be an an head of the sorry and to be an head of the head of kings and princes. The, 
No, it'll let you through warfare, basically. So to okay. go out, yeah, it does. It, but I mean, it, when they talk about military affairs, are they talking about the military? Yes. Okay, so in the military, you kind of go out and you kind of have a license to kill, right? Because right. not from not from God, um, but we kind from, of talked a little bit about that the other day about how you gain sacrifice. Yes. You can, yes. you can say that if you want to. You can talk about that. Well, yes. Yeah. So when you, you know, when, when guys go out um, uh, in the military, they pretty much, you guys are pretty much given license to kill by fellow human beings or your superior officers or whatever. Um, and I would imagine, well, I know, I mean, I'm just talking from South Africa here yeah, as well. Um The, the given orders to literally take out whoever you need to take out. And that would then mean those that blood sacrifice and that soul sacrifice is what empowers you, right? As the person who's right. done it. And then to you don't have to have, you don't have to have the, the typical, what you picture as a sacrifice. You don't have to have that. It's right. handed to you basically. Exactly, because you've gone out and destroyed, and wow. Pretty crazy how that works. Is that why they call it the shadow government and the shadow military? But I mean, really, at the end of the day, when you look at, when you look at wars and stuff like that, I mean, if you just look on this planet, since as long as far back as we can remember, wars have been funded on both sides by the same people, right? Right. And it's really a money making business. I mean, I know in South Africa as well, the Bush Wars ended when the Berlin Wall was broken down because the same people that were funding the Bush Wars I couldn't afford or couldn't afford to, uh, to fund the Bush Wars here anymore, as well as the Berlin Wall that was breaking down. So it was all, it's all just funded by money and the same people are funding it all the time. So then when look you... Into the, look into the Danish monarchy, you can see a lot of connections to them too. Right. Let me make a note of that. So then to be a head of the head of kings and princes. So when you get those sacrifices through enough killing in warfare with the license to kill and you program to kill. I mean, you've been in the military, right? And you've been right. programmed since, since a little kid. And they literally program you to hate, don't they? They do. Jeez. When it says about kings and princes, we've all seen Lord of the Rings by now. When the King of Rohan had that evil guy whispering in his ear. That's kind of what they're talking about. You can usurp the throne that way. Wow. Like what's happened here in America. The deep state spies are the ones that have usurped the throne here. John F. Kennedy was the last true president who had any kind of power. Wow. After that, they've all been puppets, including Mr. T. Mm. Yep. We know that. Okay, wow. To be a good housekeeper, both in the country and city. It's more for maintaining appearances, I think, that one. Right. The fifth is to be an industrious and fortunate, and fortunate merchant. Again, that kind of goes back to the sea people and what, you, what contracts you make with the sea people. Because how does commerce work? 
you have to ask that question first. You have to have an understanding of how that works. Half of these gods that they're going to worship come from the sea anyway. Wow. Merchant, think of that word. Mer, merfolk, merchant. Mer enchantment. Wow. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Currency is current that you ride upon, like on the ocean. A lot of nautical terms. Wow. That's why I say the East India Trading Company comes into this at some point, too. That's exactly what I'm thinking about here, yeah, the DEIC, or, I mean, I don't know if you guys, I know in South Africa, it was the Dutch East India Company. I know it might, for other places, it might just be the EIC, East India Company. But the DEIC was the first whites that arrived here um, in 1652, and they were obviously on boats and ships and things, and they were trading spices. So spices. Before the last great reset in the 1700s, I think it was, they were the deep state. They had their own army and their own navy. Wow. That would actually be very interesting to do a show on that, right? Yeah, I hope we do sometime. The original deep, deep state. I'm making a note right. here. That spies in every city on the planet. Amazing. Wow. And this was already in the before in the 1700s. Right. They were responsible for a lot of warfare. If not all of it. It's good for business. Again, that goes back to that secret. Stay busy, make money. That's what business means. Busyness. <laughs> wow. This, I mean, I'm laughing because... It's like a whole different language one has to learn, right? I mean, you know, right. when I first when I first started on this platform, I mean, I thought their symbolism and their sign <laughs> was about the uh, most prolific thing that I had to learn about, right? To see how they see about appetite and spell casting or spelling. Yeah, exactly. The whole spell casting and the appetite crystals being your teeth. Um, Wow. And now just, as you say, mer, currency, current. Wow. To be a philosopher, mathematician, and physician, <clears throat> according to Aristotle, Plato, Ptolemy, Euclides, Hippocrates, and Galen. Those are all philosophical arts. Philosoph sorry, philosophical arts. wisdom of man basically yes i'm thinking because the, i mean these are all very um wise men and you often hear them quoted and a lot of the original stuff comes from these guys right here right right or supposedly or supposedly comes from them. so you get the word elucidate from euclid yeah Okay, number seven, to be a divine according to the Bible and schools, which all writers of divinity, both old and new, have taught. The Bible scholars, for sure. I could, I could take some seminary students to, to class and teach them something new every day if I wanted to. Okay, well, let's see. 
the difference God. between their scholarship and, and anybody else's is they have all the books of the Bible. They don't have just some of them. So they know exactly how to corrupt and turn everything around and use. So that's why when we have the limited, and I'm going to call it the limited Bible that most people have in this day and age, right? So right. it's it's um, like with, so like, it, you know, like with all the teachings, really, um, there's, they've been, you know, they've taken a lot of information away out of that, like the Bible, for example. Um, so they have all that information and they're working with it to their knowledge and they're, they're profiting off that in whatever way they are. And then humanity, they've given little dribs and drabs exactly what they want. So they kind of breadcrumbed us in a way. Is that what you're saying? They're keeping us dumb. Yeah, give you little breadcrumbs. Dumb and starving. Yeah. The best example is the slave Bible. And if you know about that. Now tell us about the slave Bible. They took out the book of Exodus and all references to slavery. Wow. Okay, we have already declared that a secret is the kinds and species thereof. It remaineth now to show how we may attain to know those things which we desire. The true and only way to all secrets is to have recourse unto God, the author of all good, and as Christ teacheth. In the first place, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Also see that your hearts be not burthened with, with surfeiting, and I'm sure that's suffering, and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Do you want to expand on that at all? Um, again, it's usurping the word. Usurping it and kind of almost making a mockery of some of it, just turning it around on itself. A form of piety or God, godliness. Okay. Uh, also, commit your cares unto the Lord, and He will do it. So now they now they're quoting Bible. Yeah, this is like stuff that comes out the Bible, right? Right. So they integrating some Bible stuff in here as well, which is and creates even more confusion. I started to read the Bible is because it was presented as just another spell book. Right. But it somehow came alive. Amazing. Also, I, the Lord thy God, do teach thee what things are profitable for thee and do guide thee in the way wherein thou, thou walkest. And I will give thee understanding and will teach thee in the way where, wherein thou shalt, thou, thou shalt go. And I will guide thee with my eye. Also, if you which are evil know how to give good things to your children, no, much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give his Holy Spirit to, their, to them that ask him. If you will do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, ye are truly my disciples, and ye will come unto you and make your abode with you. So if you draw these seven places of Scripture from the letter unto the Spirit or into action, thou canst out but shalt attain to the desired bound. Thou shalt not err from the mark of God himself by his Holy Spirit will teach thee true and profitable things. He will also give his ministering angels unto thee to be thy companions, helpers and teachers of all the secrets of the world. And he will command every creature to be obedient unto thee so that cheerfully rejoicing thou, thou mayest say with the apostles, that the spirits are obedient unto thee, 
so that at length thou shalt be certain of the greatest thing of all, that thy name is written in heaven. That kind of feels to me, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, this, this is... This, this is kind of like directly coming out of the Bible, right? So it seems to me that they would add this in here to make it more biblical. So if, you know, it's, it's, it's even more deceptive, right? So it makes it even that much more deceptive. So any doubt that you may be having as a student of this at, the, at this point, you wouldn't have any more doubt or this would kind of appease you. Am I right? Right. When you're learning how to be a clown, they're going to show you nothing but clown stuff. Wow. And you know that that was altered quite a bit, too, even though it doesn't sound like it was. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great, but it's really not. Okay, aphorism 26. There's another way which is more common, that secrets may be revealed unto thee also, when thou art uh, unwriting thereof, either by God or by spirits which have secrets in their power, or by dreams, or by strong imaginations and impressions, or by the constellation of a nativity by celestial knowledge. After this manner are made heroic men, such as there are very many and all learned men in the world, Plato, Aristotle, Hippocrates, Galen, Euclides, Archimedes, Hermes, Trismeg <laughs> Trismegistus, the father of secrets with Theophrastus, Paracelsus, all which men had in themselves all the virtues of secrets. Hitherto also are referred Homer, as your Hesiod, Orpheus, Pythagoras, but these are not such gifts of secrets as the former. To this are referred the nymphs and the sons of Melusina and gods of the Gentiles, Achilles, Aeneas, I don't know how to pronounce that, Hercules, also Cyrus, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Lucullus, Scylla, Marius. It is a canon that everyone know his own angel and that he obey him according to the word of God and let him beware of the snares of the evil angel, lest he be involved in the calamities of Brute and Marcus Antonius. To this refer the book of Jovin, Jovianus <laughs> Pontanus of Fortune and his Eutychus. That sounds like a hell of a lot. What do you say to that? Mm, just kind of humanism, basically. But also they're mentioning a lot of Nephilim, too. So these, a lot of these are the great men of the planet um, and whose words basically are wise, powerful, powerful men, right? And some of them have transmuted and become immortal too. Wow. The third way is diligent and hard labor, without which no great thing can be obtained from the divine deity, worthy admiration as it is said. Okay, then there's some... Nothing canst thou do or say against Minerva's will. What does that mean? Again, they're just revealing that they worship Minerva. Think the Statue of Liberty. Right. <laughs> we do detest all evil magicians who make themselves associates with the devil with their unlawful superstitions and do obtain and affect some things which God permitteth to be done instead of the punishment of the devil. So also they do other evil acts, the devil being the author as the scripture testify of Judas. To these are referred to all idolaters and 
of our age the abusers of fortune, such as the heathens are full of. And to these do appertain all charontic evocation of spirits. The works of Saul with the woman and Lucanus prophesies prophecy of the deceased soldier concerning the event of the Pharsalian War and the like. That also sounds like a whole mouthful. What do you say about that? Right. Yeah, again, it's just, if you haven't seen by now what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it makes sense to me what they're doing because they jumble things up um, and then they talk about, you know, uh, what does he say? Uh, we detest all evil magicians, right? Mm. So anything that is overtly bad or greedy or make themselves... Talk about Satanists, which, yeah. witches from witchcraft, that kind of thing. The right. obvious evil. Because this kind of evil so, shouldn't be obvious like that. Yeah, it's overt evil, right? Overt evil. Tricks and trinkets, kids. <laughs> All the tricks and the trinkets. Yes. Okay. How are you feeling? Can you carry on for a little while longer? Or? Sure, a little bit. Okay. I think I'll maybe go for another. Yeah, go for two more. All right. Okay. And then we can call it a day for today. Aphorism 27. Okay, now. Make a circle with a center A, which is B, C, D, E. At the east, let there be B, C, a square. At the north, C, D. At the west, D, E. And at the south, E, D. Divide the several quadrants into seven parts, and there may be the whole 28 parts. And let them be again divided into four parts, and there may be 112 parts of the circle. And so many are the true secrets to be revealed. And this circle is the uh, uh, and this circle in this manner divided is the seal of the secrets of the world, which they draw from the only center A, that is from the invisible God unto the whole creature. The prince of the Oriental secrets is resident in the middle, and hath three nobles on either side. Every one whereof hath manner, uh, the other princes and nobles have their quadrants of secrets. And their four, uh, with their four secrets. But the, but the oriental secret is the study of all wisdom. The west of strength, the south of tillage, the north of more rigid life. So that the eastern secrets are, com are commanded to be the best. The meridian to be mean and the east and north to be lesser. The use of this real of the seal of secrets is that thereby thou mayest know whence the spirit or angels are produced, which may teach the secrets delivered unto them from God. But they have names taken from their offices and powers according to the gift which God hath severally distribute, distributed to every one of them. One hath the power of the sword, another of pestilence, and another of inflicting famine upon the people, as it is ordained by God. Some are destroyers of cities, as those two were who were sent to overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah, and the places of adjacent examples where the Holy Scripture witnesseth. Some are the watchmen over kingdoms, others the keepers of private persons, and from thence anyone may easily form their names in his own language so that he will may ask a physical angel, mathematical or uh, philosophical or an angel of civil wisdom or of supernatural or natural wisdom or for anything whatsoever and let him ask seriously with a great desire of his mind and with faith and constancy and without doubt <laughs> that which he asketh he shall receive it from the Father of God of all spirits. This faith surmounteth all seals and bringeth them into subjection to the will of man. The characteristical manner of calling angels succeedeth his, this faith, which dependeth onely, uh, onely on divine revelation. 
but without the said faith preceding it, it lieth in obscurity. Nevertheless, if anyone will use them for memorial and not otherwise, and as a thing simply created by God to his purpose to which such a spiritual power or essence is bound, he may use them without any offense unto God. But let him beware, lest that he fall into uh, adult <laughs> idolatry and the snares of the devil, who with his cunning sorceries easily deceiveth the unwary. And he is not taken, but only by the finger of God and is appointed to the service of man, so that they unwillingly serve the godly, but not without temptations and tribulations, because the commandment hath it, that he shall bruise the heel of, of Christ and see and the seed of the woman. We are therefore to exercise ourselves about spiritual things with fear and trembling and with a great reverence towards God and to be uh, conversant in spiritual essences with gravity and justice. And he with um, meddleth, and he which meddleth with such things, let him be beware of all levity, pride, covetousness, vanity, envy, and ungodliness, unless he will miserably perish. Another big mark. So get the first part of that whole thing there with the letters and the, key, the squares and all that? Yeah. That's the first mention that you'll notice of a cube. Right. And musicians might notice that too, that the different letters are different frequencies of music and chords. Wow. That's how you open the cube. You sing to it. Wow. Wow. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so they're giving, they're pretty much giving you that information. And as you say, it's music. And you, when you start, I mean, anyone who's listened to a lot of the uh, survivors that I've, and I know not just me, but other people have also interviewed, there's one thing that they really all have is a really good voice. That's what they chosen for as well, right? So that they can operate these things. Are you, am I right? Musical talent. Think yeah. of the two words, musician, magician. They go hand in hand. Wow. That's the beginning of the secrets of Metatron's cube for sure. Or the Haradra cube or the Tesseract or whatever people call it. Wow. You actually become a priest in that once you initiate. I want to read that again, uh, not now, but later, because there's a lot in that. Yeah. That I'd like to actually. Also, there's lipstick on a pig. <laughs> Still a pig. <laughs> Still looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Give the pig a chance. Come. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to now read the last one, which is Aphorism 28. Because all good is from God, who is only good. Those things which we would obtain of him, we ought to seek them by prayer and spirit and truth and the simple heart. The conclusion of the secret of secrets is that everyone exercise himself in prayer for those things which he desires, and he shall not suffer repulse. Let not anyone despise prayer, for by whom God is prayed unto, to him he, he both can and will give. Now let us acknowledge him, the author, from, who, from whom let us humbly seek for our desires. A merciful and good father loveth the sons of desires, as Daniel and sooner heareth us, then we are able to overcome the hardness of our hearts to pray. But he will not, but he will not that we give only holy things to dogs, 
nor despise and condemn the gifts of his treasury. Therefore, diligently and often read over, read over and over the first septenary of secrets and guide uh, and uh, direct thy life and all thy thoughts according to those precepts. And all things shall yield to the desires of thy mind to the Lord, to whom, to whom thou truest. They make it very complicated, don't they? Pretty yeah. Soon they I'm kind of touching on the cube again. Um, think of the movie Hellraiser and that cube in that movie. What that did it does open portals. It, it's really hard to explain it, but it's a very dangerous device, to put it that way. But it, it factors into all magic. And definitely into masonry. Wow. The pine cone in the purse comes to mind. That's what's in the purse. But they, they couldn't touch it. They couldn't hold it in their hand. Because it would, it would transfer you somewhere else or kill you. Wow. Okay. Well, I think we're going to leave it there for tonight then. Um, it seems we would probably have... one or two more nights of this or, or um, shows where we're doing this. Depends That's just the Arbitel. I mean, we could go through a lot of books. Again, I'm, I'm not going to do spell casting books with you, spell tomes. We can mention them, but I'm not going to talk about them. I told you some just so you know that you can't easily practice magic. It's really complicated, and you have to have aptitude anyway. Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, it's like there's a lot more for us just to do this the way that we're doing it. Uh, there's a lot more that is required to do spells and things as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also re requires some kind of bloodletting. So. Yeah. Is that is that a prerequisite before you start doing spell crafting, casting, and stuff like that? That you actually do Pretty some much. sacrifice, and that would be animal sacrifices, I would imagine, or human, or both. Well, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Then this would definitely not be down my alley, that's for sure. Okay, well then, Caleb, we're going to call it a day, yeah? Yeah. Are you good with that? I'm going right. to bed now. Yeah. yeah, cool. Okay, everybody, thank you so, so much. Caleb, do you want to end up for us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for information. Thank you for opening up eyes, as protection and wisdom and guidance and to let the people see the knowledge that they need to see us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And, yeah, I think these, these things, uh, I know I'm definitely going to, Relook at some of the things just to wrap my head around some of whatever it is because it's so slippery and the way they do it so seductive and so deceptive. It's just a premier into what you're getting into. So, yeah, it's good. By to the know time that you go through your initiation and whatnot, you've already signed in on the dotted line at least once. You made an informed decision. So, 
No innocence there. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate um, I appreciate what you've uh, um, taught us tonight as well, for sure. Much appreciated. And we shall see you guys. What's today? Sunday back on Thursday again. Uh, yeah. Have a great, great, great week and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And we shall see you very soon. Take good care. God bless you all.